You're listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Monday, January 20th. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Thank you. To you as well. Thank you. Uh, it's a holiday and uh, we get to address uh, some of the, the, the topics surrounding that in just a little bit. Uh, in the second half of the program, we had the opportunity to talk with Dr. Dean Taylor, mm-hmm. uh, who is the keynote speaker at the uh, special event, the holiday celebration at uh, Concordia University, Nebraska today. Uh, so obviously it's pre-recorded. <laughs> Can't uh, be in two places at this once. This is true. It's an amazing superpower, though. Uh, <laughs> so we, we'll share that with you in the second half of the program. It is Monday, which means there's also Mental Health Monday. We'll check in mm-hmm. with Deaconess Heidi Gaiman in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. It is time to check in with Deaconess Heidi Gaiman for Mental Health Monday. Good morning, Heidi. Good morning. Happy Monday. And uh, I don't know, can I say happy Monday since our topic is sadness today? (laughs) Uh, Sadness. We can call it full range of emotion Monday. Oh, wow. (laughs) There's no alliteration in that one. That's deep. (laughs) (laughs) Full range of emotion. I like that. That... In my other life as a personal trainer, we need full range of motion. So this is full range of emotion. emotion. Ooh, I like it. Good connection. So it's probably healthy then, right? Because full range of motion is healthy. <laughs> it's true. I need to be able to to use full range of motion. So it's it's really I'm we're all like I'm rotating. Right I'm, now. I'm, 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 I, yes, I'm doing a full backward rotation with my arm, and that means nothing to the listener. Sorry. Nope. All right, full range of emotion. Uh, we're gonna Stop this we're happiness. gonna talk about sadness. Where would you like to begin with sadness? This takes me to that kids movie. What's the mm. the movie? Um, Inside, Inside Out. Out. Yes. yes. Yeah, I love it. I recommend it to everyone. And it's a really good way to help people understand how your memory is processed and everything too. And in that movie, we see the value of sadness, you know, instead of relegating it to something that is evil or awful, or we just want to push away. And so that's a, that's a really good way to contextualize the, the place of sadness. You know, just like anything else, we can make anything an idol. And so I don't want to elevate sadness too high. Like, oh, you're not really experiencing life if you're not sad. You know, <laughs> that, that's not true. We want, we want delight and we want happy as well, but sadness has its place. And I think it's interesting how you were talking about being a trainer and the full range of motion in your body, just as God uses that image of the body for the body of Christ, right? That lives and moves and and we need each part and all of that. The same is true for our full range of emotions. We need each part in order to have the richness of life and the full experience. Um, and so, you know, we, we don't want uh, people being untreated for clinical depression. We don't want to not address the sadness, but at the same time, we can appreciate what it does in our life and in our bodies for us. Yeah, sadness is probably one of those emotions that we try to avoid um, or or try to uh, uh, lessen the effects of it. It's not one that we, we generally like feeling, mm-hmm. um, wh- but I had never thought of the of sadness having a place. Like it does have a purpose when we feel that emotion. Right. I think about, if you think about just tears, that's kind of one of the easiest ways for us to physically contextualize sadness. Um, you know, tears are a good gift of God. We do look forward to the day when we have no more tears in heaven. So that's an important now and not yet theology. Uh, but God does bottle our tears. You know, he captures them and he sees them. And and I just think that's such an intimate thing in the Psalms when it says that he, he takes our tears and he puts them in a bottle, like he sees everyone and values everyone. And I think about when we were created in perfection and there weren't tears and then sin came in and uh, God knew we would need a way to express the devastation of brokenness, you know, in big ways, you know, when sadness is really big and really uncomfortable and all-encompassing and devastation or hopeless um, and loss and grief, but also in, in little ways, when we kind of just need an emotional release, we need a place to get our emotions from boiling over on the inside onto the outside. You can see when you look at those things how 
tears are a good gift, even when the brokenness itself is, is problematic in our world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so often we, we, I don't know, try to push it under the surface or don't want to talk about it or, or are ashamed of crying in public for a long time. I couldn't cry in front of anybody else because I thought it was weird. Um, I got married and decided that, you know, crying in front of my husband was actually a good thing because then he can share in my emotion and, and actually help me through those emotions. Um, but how, how do we remove that, um, that shame of of feeling sad in front of other people, and especially in a culture that um, puts such a, a big thing on being happy all the time. Yeah, I think that partly it is embracing it for ourselves. You know, that's how we make any changes in our communities in general and our communities of faith is being the person who isn't ashamed of it and, and calling that out, like saying to our, to our friend who's expressing uh, something that there is no shame and sadness, that God has a place for that in our lives um, while he does mourn alongside us, while he does prepare a better place for us that doesn't have all the sadness in it. And so I think one thing as Christians we have that other people do not have is that foundation of God and what he says. And so we can always turn back to, is this something that God values? What does God say about it? And we said the same thing with anger, because otherwise, like you said, we just go believing what the culture is saying about it. And, you know, I am a person who my entire life tried to escape sadness. <laughs> like, I'll be honest, like, that's uncomfortable. And, um, you know, in a family where uh, one of my family members struggled with probably what was undiagnosed depression, just wanting to get away from it. And I think if anyone is listening and identifies with that, they can like physically feel the feeling of wanting to get away from the sadness and the discussion of sadness and all of that stuff. Um, But it wasn't until I had therapy and I sat in what sadness was and what it meant and what that um, showed me about God, you know, what what wrestling I needed to do in my relationship with God over sadness and what that meant, then, wow, that really opened a door to being able to make some changes in my life and being able to step out and end the stigma for other people as well. I don't recall, I'm not an expert, but I don't recall ever reading in the scriptures that that God promises that we will always be happy, much to the (laughs) detriment of society. Right. And and, uh, in high contrast to a children's song that many were taught at a young age, a children's like little Christian kids Sunday school song type thing Mm -hmm. that teaches the very opposite. Hmm. That, right, that right. you'll be happy Can we all create the time. Our own? Right, that right. you'll be but happy it does all say the time. That. I didn't even think about that. Wow, that's really good. And and I think being cautious, without you know, obviously we're not going to steamroll all the Christian kids songs and stuff like that. <laughs> but at the same time, being conscious of what we're teaching ourselves yes. and our children when we say words and when we sing songs, and and I think that there is a place for especially music that you, I told you guys I have an emotion playlist, you know, and it'll come out on my website in the next few months, but songs that help us to engage in that emotion Mm -hmm. with, again, letting them inform us, but not lead us. So we don't need to do things um, or, you know, uh, you know, say words that just like that because we are experiencing emotion like our moods don't determine our actions uh but when we can use our uh emotional intelligence to identify hey i'm sad then i can get what i need you know then i can turn to god in his word i can use some of the laments and things that he himself gives me the process of mourning and all of that that he gives me in order to move forward. And at the same time, God does this weird thing where we also delight in him at the same time. You know, our emotions aren't a vacuum where we just experience one. Um, and I think that's another thing that society likes is, oh, I, I'm sad now and I'm happy tomorrow. And it, it's not like that. You mentioned clinical depression earlier mm-hmm. and we'll, our usual disclaimer. <laughs> That this is not therapy. This is not therapy. Um, uh, Please see, contact a local mental health provider. L- let's take a look at the difference between uh, that that full range of emotions, uh, the spectrum of emotions with sadness and and clinical depression. I, it's important for us to to understand mm-hmm. the difference. I think if there is a yeah. difference. 
No, there is definitely a difference. And like, because it's a range, you know, it is a range. And the question we ask when we are looking at whether something is a clinical manifestation that needs medication, that needs further help, um, that we we really do not want to enter a slip, slippery slope for, if you will, we ask the question, is this interfering with my functioning? You know, so one thing we, changes in sleeping and eating, um, changes in our mood in such a way where we we are experiencing the sadness and a sense of hopelessness for several days and a couple of weeks on end. And, and the DSM, which is our diagnostic manual for mental health stuff, uh, gives us some very particular uh, ranges of days and things like that, that a mental health professional can help you evaluate. There's some really good survey, surveys and stuff online, but one of our first lines of defense is to go see our general practitioner, our family doctor, and they have all of these tools to help us in a, in a pretty swift fashion determine whether we are at a place where we need to engage in some medication and engage in some help right away, or if it's something we can keep an eye on and things like that. So, you know, if it's interfering with your functioning in any way, that's relational functioning, that's uh, physical functioning, that's job and employment, all of those different areas of my life. If it's interfering in any of them, then it's time to get help to seek some insight on that for ourselves. Is there a way we can encourage each other uh, if, if in our family members or friends uh, when we're if we see someone that maybe is sad um, for days on end, uh, encouraging them to, uh, to 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 walk through it or to or to take it to their doctor? And we have just yeah. a, like a minute. Three yeah. seconds, <laughs> right? Um, of course, every time. Um, I would say that my favorite phrase is, I noticed. Mm. And, you know, there's no judgment in that. Like, I, well, I mean, you could certainly add it. But, <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. But, right. I noticed that you seem really sad. I mean, just be honest. You know, people can smell inauthenticity a mile away. And so just state it in a non judgmental way with care and concern and the willingness to help help engage in it further instead of walk away once the answer has been given that you're not really comfortable with. Um, so that's, I think, just enter with, I noticed. Deacon Aside a Game in Mental Health Monday. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'll see you next Monday. Coming up in just a little bit, we'll check in with, well, we'll share with you the, the interview we had with Dr. Dean Taylor on uh, this Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs>